what we enjoyed so much about it was this was an opportunity to put our students, our interns and such to work doing the things they they are studying to do and pay them for it. <laughs> um, like student photographers, studio, student audio engineers, student uh, theater technicians, and so on and so forth. And uh, in about four hours of work, we brought about $2,500 from campus. Wow. So very, 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 very grateful for that. And hopefully, um, and then they went to uh, Legends for several hours and had their uh, their tournament banquet at uh, David Buster's. So the economic impact for Wyandotte County was considerable. Cool. Very grateful for that. Awesome.
what they found, and, and not in all cases, but in many, many cases, is that institutions weren't in compliance. And so from there, that, I think, has, has fueled some additional uh, attention towards the whole issue of sexual violence, sexual assault, sexual harassment on campus. And so institutions have been working very hard to make sure that we meet all federal mandates related to uh, uh, the process of uh, working with uh, alleged victims of sexual violence and the process of investigating the allegations, uh, making decisions uh, on what the outcome should, should be. Um, and uh, so what you have, in, if you have it in front of you or if you're looking at it on, on your screen, is probably about the 12th draft, I think, and I, I, I probably stopped counting. Um, we've been working on this for about eight months. Uh, uh, and I've been uh, predominantly uh, along with the Title IX Committee, and again, Leota is the Title IX Coordinator and she'll be here shortly. But along with the Title IX Committee, we've been working with uh, College Legal Counsel. And uh, uh, one of the uh, attorneys, uh, McAnally, uh, and, and the rest of the name of the law firm, I'm not going to get right, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Teresa Mata, one of the attorneys, uh, worked with me step by step on this uh, throughout the, the, the eight months that we we crafted this. Um, the Office of Civil Rights also provided an abundance of information to help institutions come up with uh, a comprehensive policy. Uh, it's probably a good time for me just to, to mention that this is intended to be the college policy. In other words, if the Office of Civil Rights were to, were, were to show up on this campus and they say, where's your policy? And depending on our approval processes and so on, this is what we would show. This is absolutely not what, would, what we would give to someone who said that they have, they have just been sexually assaulted, okay? You know, this is a 20-some page document that is full of legalese and, and, and all kinds of, of information that um, we, we were, were required to, to have included in our policy. But the brochure, um, posters, and flyers that hopefully you've seen around campus, um, at least I know the monitor in the hallway adjacent to my office continually scrolls uh, Title IX uh, uh, reporting uh, policies. Um, but this, this, this is uh, the type of information that goes out to uh, the campus community. Uh, we have a start. So, so again, this is, what this is, is, is this is what meets the federal mandates, much like the Clery Act, uh, if, if you're familiar with what that is, is the, the federal legislation that our campus law enforcement has to keep track of crime statistics. And they have something like this. It's a lot thicker, okay? But they don't hand this out. They have on their website, on our website, uh, more of a reader-friendly explanation of, of uh, what our crime statistics are, what kind of victim support services, are providing, et cetera. So I only use that as a comparison that, we, that this is the same type of thing. You have to have a, a, a sort of a, a main policy, but then what, what you use to disseminate the information needs to be reader friendly. It needs to be helpful to, um, to uh, uh, alleged victims of uh, sexual violence, et cetera. Uh, if you look at the at, at the document itself, uh, I'm not going to, uh, unless you would like me to, I'm not going to really go through uh, 
page by page. Uh, but if you look at the table of contact, contents, uh, it basically just intro introduces what the purpose of this is, of, of this policy is. It is the title line um, policy that responds to how college campuses uh, deal with the importance of sexual violence. Um, we're, we're used to the term campus climate survey, and that's something that we use at this institution to to, to measure satisfaction of staff on in terms of their their uh, feelings about about the college. Uh, a Title IX campus climate survey assesses how students, faculty, and staff feel about um, how safe the campus is. Are there reporting options for victims of uh, alleged victims of sexual assault? Are, are, are those well known? Uh, and then ask some other general questions that, that the, the purpose of the, of the campus climate survey is to help us as an institution do the best possible job of supporting um, victims uh, and uh, you know, working to make our campus uh, as safe as possible. The scope of the policy, again, it just kind of read reiterates what the what the general uh, uh, purpose of, of, of having this type of a policy is. Uh, the next section is the roles and responsibilities of the Title IX coordinator and Leota uh, Marks as our Title IX coordinator. Feel free to tell me anytime you okay. like. Okay. <laughs> and uh, all institutions are required to have a Title IX coordinator, and uh, also have what are called deputy coordinators. And ironically, right now we are dealing with the Title IX uh, uh, case, and Leota has been um, had doesn't have to work 24 hours a day, so she, she's, she's been out of town. So one of our deputy coordinators is actually handling the case. But uh, the role of some responsibilities of the Title IX coordinator, if, 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 if you are happening to be, be looking at that section, are pretty expansive. Uh, that that individual has responsibility for, for training, um, for meeting all compliance mandates, that all faculty, staff, and students receive some level of training on, on the mandates. Um, that person is uh, accessible and well known by the campus um, and is, is someone who uh, is uh, well versed on, on all the laws associated with with that uh, one. Then, we, then, then the, the policy deals with privacy and confidentiality and as you can imagine with any type of situation where there, there is a uh, allegation of sexual assault or sexual violence or sexual harassment. Uh, there are privacy and confidential confidentiality issues. And uh, the, can I ask you a question? You betcha. Um, because this was just in the chronicle about confidentiality, Oregon. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. So does this reflect that? Because they had to release the records from counseling. Yes. Yes. The, well, one, one of the things that I'll say is that you know, even though Title IX has been around for uh, 20, 30 years, the, this whole issue that's focused in on, on sexual violence, uh, there, there, there is a, a, a great deal of attention being drawn to it. And um, in addition to, to Title IX, there's what's called the, the Violence uh, Against Women, Women's Act. And then there's also the SAVE Act, uh, which is the Safe Campus Act, and there's the Clery Act. And then individual states are, be are beginning to pass legislation that all have to deal not Exclusively, exclusively with with sexual violence, 
but but he just referenced the Oregon case, but there have been um, actually in Kansas there is some recent legislation that mirrors a lot of, of the information that's contained in the in the in the federal version of of, uh, of Title IX. But I guess what I'm getting at is it's very dynamic right now. It's changing, and that you know after eight months, I think that the committee felt that we needed to um, go through the proper procedures to to get uh, to, to get this acknowledged and passed, but recognizing that probably the very next day it would be outdated because there is so much that's changing. Terms of the law, and and there are federal laws. Uh, the Violence Against Women's Act, for example, uh, conflicts with the Clery Act. The Clery Act conflicts with Title IX. So it, 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 right now it, it's uh, it, it's just a, a, a period where everyone is working really really hard to uh, to come up with policies and procedures, but in, in some instances, they actually can put each other. Um, and that's in the report that she was trying to Excuse me? And that would be like in the report, to clarify maybe for students, that'd be like more in our reporting areas, because we want women to report or in a man that's been abused, but sometimes laws, other acts are in place that prohibit that being shared. Yeah, and, and you know, I think what's important to mention is is that at least, if I can speak on behalf of the Title IX committee, is that the bottom line is providing a safe campus and assistance for victims. It's not to just meet federal mandates, because federal mandates are always going to change, and they're always going to, um, you know, the the the, the penalties. Uh, for most federal mandates is potential loss of all federal funds, which would mean for us loss of federal financial aid. So that's kind of, you know, that's kind of scary, scary and so on, but, but I think more than anything else, this has to do with what do we do to serve our students, faculty, and staff their victims. And while we, while we have to write legalistic policies and so on, the bottom line is, 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 is one of those issues. You want to add to that? Yeah. Well, um, thank you. Um, I apologize for my lateness. Um, and thank you, Jonathan, for going ahead and, and getting started. Um, on behalf of the committee, we have a Title IX committee uh, that's been operating this academic year. And it's made up of faculty and staff from across the campus. And we've been very actively um, providing training for the students and for the employees uh, on Title IX. But even before Title IX really came to the surface as such an important issue on college campuses, we have had a sexual harassment and violent policy on this campus. And um, so we were have always been concerned uh, with the safety and security of <coughs> employees and the rights of employees and our students in that area. So this this is to update the policy that we have and broaden the scope due to uh, Title IX law. Um, one of the, the main reasons we thought, you know, we wanted to just uh, review this with all the different constituents on campus to make sure that, uh, you know, they saw it before, um, you know, it went to the next level as far as being approved by administration and board, uh, you know, because there, this is all about protecting the students and the employees and the public as well. Um, one of the sections that I just want to draw attention to, I don't know if we've already talked about it, no, the section. I've really just been You haven't gotten this, okay. It was section E, uh, prohibited relationships by persons in authority. Um, and, um, we have extra copies. It's just the meat of it. Yeah, this, is, this is kind of the policy. Oh, that on, just we're all on the same page. page. Uh, we, we are, what page would that be? It's on page 9. Under the, well, I'm looking at this copy like this. 
one thing I wanted to say is that as as the Office of Civil Rights has given out more and more guidance, they've tried to define and redefine and redefine some of these terms. And, and again, it kind of comes to a point where it, it, it and that's kind of why, you know, where we're at with, in, in terms of wanting to get this moved through, is that some of these are always going to be somewhat subjective. And, but, but I do think that, that uh, in, in a bit, uh, reference to this policy infers um, that, that there would be some type of sexual relation. Sorry, I just want to clarify. Yeah, no, no. And that's what we want is, 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 is uh, we want questions that if there's, if there's a way that we can, we can state something better, uh, uh, we want to do that. And again, the Office of Civil Rights, there are certain things in this policy that, that, that the OCR said you have to phrase it this way, <laughs> okay? It wasn't optional. But there was other parts of it where they were actually quite reasonable and said, you know, you phrase this to fit your campus, okay? And, and, and so in, in, in those instances, if there are perhaps ways that you can phrase something, make it a little bit clearer, whatever, you know, we want to do that because again, for me, and, and I think for the title, I can make the bottom line is how do we make this process accessible and uh, informative and, and, and helpful for individuals who may be uh, victims of sexual violence. <clears throat> and so to do that, we would go to you or to the committee or if we have some, I know it's not to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do we? We would like for you to share it with faculty. Uh, share it with. No, 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 I mean right here. Like, yeah, I, just just the the <coughs> I would prefer to have the, the input in writing. Um, okay. You can send it to me. Okay, that's what I'm asking you. That's what you're That's what I'm asking you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do take responsibility for uh, the fact that D is missing, okay, and, and, and that there is possibly still a few typos, and, and I'm not real big on some right. What do you mean? Uh, I'm just I'm saying specifically about this phrase about confidential counseling victims. That's not. I'm on page 14. Those confidential counseling records were taken in the lawsuit in Oregon. And so that, this to me says, go to the counseling center, get therapy, it's private, and it's confidential, and the university won't access those records. That's not what legally happens. So I have some concerns about sending someone and saying it'll be confidential when case law is saying, that's my concern. That would be your. That would be what you would write to your input for us to evaluate. Okay. One, one, one other part of it is, is that. Um, I don't want to send somebody. To, you know, I'm a psychologist. <laughs> no, I don't want to send no, somebody and say, "Hey, this is confidential," the, when the university can take it. The counselor-client uh, confidentiality yeah, is, is absolutely imperative, and the Office of Civil Rights understands that. There are some states, Oregon is one of them, that are challenging. Uh, right. That are challenging uh, some of the mandates that are set by the OCR. But at this at this point, federal supersedes state. So we are still following the federal guidelines and not like based on Oregon case law. Yeah. Um, now, you know how things are going to change. Uh, again. Uh, I, I, as, as someone who's been involved in advocacy for victims for 30 years, what I would say is right. that, that that it would be hard pressed for for that for that counselor client uh, confidentiality to ever be compromised to to the point that uh, a victim feels that that they they can't trust that, that information will be shared. Having said that, there are nine states now in, 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 in this country that have uh, proposed legislation.
legislation that all reports of sexual violence be handled 100% by law enforcement. <coughs> I can't as law enforcement. Yeah. Well, one thing related to that is in that same uh, session, there's now a website that's, that's been developed that helps is actually funding litigation of those people who claim they have been wrongly accused. So institutions have the Office of Civil Rights on one side with their their camera. And then now you're starting to get those that have been accused suing because their civil rights have been violated because they weren't afforded due process. It's it's putting institutions in the middle of, you know, which do you want to, which do, would you rather try to defend? A civil lawsuit from somebody accused or with the Office of Civil Rights themselves? And the lawyer, um, she had a great quote about if, if the OCR comes. She said if the Office of Civil Rights comes to your campus, it means you hope to minimize the finding, not get a clear finding. She basically said that if they come and they start looking, they will find findings. And you know, that it's more likely that you would find you get find something rather than not find anything at all. So you know, it's it's an interesting situation that institutions are being placed in. And maybe that's John why some of the states are are well, going to that law that law enforcement has to investigate. I mean, your explanation was was right on target is that there are states that have that do not feel that colleges uh, college administration if you will title IX coordinators and deans of students and, and so forth should be uh, adjudicating sexual assault sexual violence sexual harassment cases they feel that that should be within the purview of law enforcement and the, the uh, Office of Civil Rights has been very supportive of uh, having, uh, and, and, and this is just is in no way uh, a negative statement about campus law enforcement, because they, we, uh, they're considered partners in this process. Um, but, but that the, the feeling is, is that it should be um, dealt with through uh, a non-law enforcement process. Uh, the, and I, I promise I won't go into too much uh, uh, legal detail here, but on a college campus, when, whatever type of investigation it is, if it's through the Student Code of Conduct or through, through Title IX, we have different rules of evidence we have uh, different um, ways that that processes are handled. We're not a court of law. Uh, we don't have attorneys. We don't have uh, judges. We're educated. And as such, um, our process is at any college or university that receives the federal funds, in order for us to conclude that someone is responsible for in this case, uh, an act of, of, of sexual violence, there's what's called the preponderance of evidence, and that's 51% responsible. And, and I use the analogy of two stacks of, of paper, typing paper, and in this stack there's one more piece of paper. That's a preponderance of evidence. Now in a court of law, it's 72, 74%, which is uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. And if there was an attorney in the room, <laughs> is there an attorney in the room? Okay. <laughs> 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 I figured if Mr. Wynn's not here, but I maybe some of you were seeing the attorney. And, 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 but but there, that's always the challenge, is, and that's what's come up with, with, with some of these cases 
where they've gone and said, well, how can, how can a group of, of college administrators uh, make this decision when at a, in a court of law, the, the, the uh, rules of evidence uh, and, and the, decision, the decision making is so much higher. Well, for really uh, the last 50 or 60 years, there's always been the acknowledgement that college and university judicial processes, or in this case, investigatory processes, don't have to reach that same level as a court of law. We don't have forensics evidence. It's, we don't have CSIs where we get DNA and, and call in expert witnesses and so on. You know, and uh, I guess personally, I, that's that that would not be the way that I would want to have us <coughs> proceed at an educational institution. But. Uh, Again, you know, probably the, the biggest criticism is that is that we, we do not have to have the level of proof that that uh, would be required if it was handled in the criminal courts. Without wanting to disparage anybody here or on this particular campus, college administrators have an inherent conflict of interest, which is protecting the name of the university. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I would just reinforce that those that that, that have been found 
bound to have been covering it up are the ones that that's where their the image is damaged. Um, just just a, another note, uh, the, the attorney also said that if the OCR comes to investigate, there's a mandatory three-year look back. So they'll look back three years from when they come to see what's going on. And you know, and we're expected to be doing training. So we've, you know, we've done that, and rolled out the online training for that. And you know, there's, uh, they talked about two types of primary for people that are new, just coming up to the institution and then ongoing. And the, uh, I think somebody asked a question about well, how do you mandate that? And the answer was the training must be offered to students and employees and there needs to be a, a, an effort to promote participation. Um, and she even suggested for students you do some sort of training and tie it to your registration process. That you, know, you almost make the students go through some sort of a small online tutorial before they can actually register for their classes. I was, I, I was just gonna say, I know is very crude in its delivery, but there are there are ways to deliver that information and uh, without the perpetuation of like rape culture or rape forgiveness. And it's something that I think that Casey so Casey could be preventative yeah, side. preventative side of things. That is something that Casey Casey could be the, the forefront of as far as colleges goes, because we've been doing a lot of research and there aren't a lot of colleges adapting to that yet. There are colleges that are talks of it, but there's been no actual distinct action. So I'm putting together some things. I've read this, I he gave you a copy of this a couple weeks back, and uh, we're trying to come up with some, some clear, solid ideas to maybe help distribute the word through student voice as well as like technology. And I'll get back to you on that when I actually have some clear, solid ideas. So, Dr. Long, you want to talk about the survey? Yeah, 
Yeah, the, the campus climate survey, which again, you all, if you're, if you're looking at your screens, if not, um, pass this around, is during our arena enrollment uh, a couple months ago now. Uh, Part of the mandates of, of from from the OCR is that there is a, a campus climate survey, and as I mentioned earlier, it's it's not what we con commonly think of as a campus climate survey. Uh, this one has to do with the, de the de degree to which uh, faculty, staff, and students feel that this campus is uh, not only a safe campus but also one that has Victim services, yeah, assistance, uh, well informed uh, faculty, staff, and students, individuals that, um, if they are approached by a student who wishes to disclose <coughs> that they, they have some training on what, what, what the process should be. And uh, so we got a pretty good response rate and, and got a lot of good feedback. Uh, from uh, about 230 students who, uh, who fill out the, the Canvas Climate Survey. And, and for what it's worth, and again, this is, you know, any kind of feedback is, is important, but in general, uh, what I would say is that, is that the, the responses were that students feel reasonably safe on this campus and that they feel that there are services and that there are services, whether it's it's officially through like the Student and Community Resource Center with uh, Jennifer Gieschen and Andrea Wilcoxon, or just supportive faculty, staff, and students. Because, you know, there can be a small cadre of people that are called coordinators or called victim assistants, or I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, if you go to the last page of, of the, the policy that we came out. This is a flow chart that shows kind of how the process works. And the Dean of Student Services, after the investigation, I'm the final stop. I look over the investigation and make, make a determination of responsibility or, or lack of responsibility based on the, on the allegation. But really what this is about is that it, it, it's not just this cadre of people that are called coordinators or me or or folks with official OCR titles. It's it's that students, faculty, and staff feel that this is an environment where they they can feel comfortable reporting and coming to work because the stigma that's associated with 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 being victimized is such that still a, a great percentage of men, women, um, gay, straight, uh, whatever it may be, individuals that are victimized do not be poor. And that's, that, that's nothing new. That, that's been the, that, that, that has been um, a problem that has, has been prevalent for, for, for many, many years. So I like to look at it as, as, as throwing the net as wide as I can so that as many people on this campus, and again, not just those of us with these designated titles, that, that, that we have a general atmosphere of understanding of what this is about. And then one other comment I just wanted to make is that the OCR does address false accusations. And you know, Mike talked about some instances where uh, students were found responsible and then they filed lawsuits and so on. I mean, the, the, the basic st uh, standards of due process still prevail in, 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 in this policy. In other words, the, the investigation uh, and, and all the follow-up is that there's not a presumption of responsibility um, um, because someone reports. The report is the starting point. Um, the, 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 it, it, it is important that the alleged victim is, is treated um, with um, sensitivity and uh, respect 
but at the same time, the alleged perpetrator has the same right, has the rights of due process that are guaranteed to them by the Constitution. So I guess I just wanted to make that, 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 that point clear, and that there will, that, for example, the investigation that, that, that we're conducting now, it may end up that, that, that there is not, that there is not uh, a finding of responsibility. Sean, you have a question? Yes. Um, I know that in terms of this college and getting people to fill out surveys can be extremely difficult, um, especially for students. Could you guys make it mandatory that in order for a person to enroll that they have to fill this out? Boom, that's your 100% student population. Well, I mean, unless, well, for at least for people when they have to go to the actual advisor to enroll, that in the process of them enrolling that they have to fill this out. Now, as far as people who already have the 30 credit hours, and can enroll online, like I see people who enroll today.
specific have busy, folks have been calling, and you know, there's been a couple of technical glitches, but folks are responding really well to it. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Let us move to reports. Shirley, you can do it. Thank you. I apologize for not sending the, uh, my, my customary bullets. Um, the day of the Eats Council was also the day of the tornado drill and the day that we were dealing with uh, erroneous insurance problems. So that, my, my minutes got kind of. <laughs> kind of botched that particular needs council. Um, but as much as I remember, uh, we worked on a uh, modification of the program deviation form. Um, we talked about several particular changes coming up in the uh, science and the uh, CIS degree. And uh, we worked on, uh, I shared some information I had found uh, Proud out three weeks ago about uh, for the divisions who might wish to update and, uh, and verify the website directory so that the people are, are tied correctly, or so the faculty are tied correctly with their discipline, tied correctly with their with their division, and so on and so forth. Um, colleagues, I'll open it up to you because that was kind of a disjointed meeting. We don't know where to take the ball, just left the guard. Um, we also talked about putting the testing center in. Right? Thank you. And some issues with um, reporting of on, from online, right? Online. So if you were in online classes. We have to have some written procedure for uh, online students complaining process. Right. We, have, we may have some you know, custom practices here, but uh, I'm looking for some kind of written procedure what online students has to go through to file a complaint about any part of the online or other aspects of the college here. Right. And we talked about some internal things for us, but so data tail, which is our system for all the class and everything that's put in, training for people that keep up to speed on things like that. Um, getting ready for graduation. We're going to do two ceremonies of graduation this year. So you guys can help share with that. So okay. um, just as a, a question in terms of the knowledge of the board for students, it, it has been very difficult when you don't know all of the procedures of graduation and then students are directed to our office and they're asking questions about graduation, and it's baffling for me to be like, well, I don't know, or, you know, my it's VP. Because your office is taking the list. True, um, but in the case that, you know, Andrika is not there, I still feel as though, as the student body representatives, that we should at least know. Is the letter that went out? No. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, if you um, by a Kari, uh, Kari or Wade's office, all of each of the division offices received some mailings about that. We just got ours posted up in the division office. Okay. Uh, granted, I think that one was geared toward faculty. Well, just, for, uh, just for the sake of it. our being able to help this Yeah, students. by all means, we'll make you a copy and you can have it. And okay. Okay. Also, there is a graduation. There's a graduation committee. Talk right. to John Long. He's chairing it. John and yeah. Dr. McDowell. Right. Yeah. Uh, those and two are in charge of that committee. Okay. And I'm on it. I mean, there's. But I, I did wonder why there were no faculty or student representatives. Let's start with the letter that came out from Andrea because it goes to all students who have applied for graduation. Yes. Um, we're doing graduation degree checks a semester ahead of time, so they all have to know. And um, that's a really good starting point because it has what time is rehearsal, what do I have to do, how do I get this, where do I go to pick up my cap and gown, all of those types of things are in that letter. Yeah. Yeah, I really have to continue though because it was just, because <laughs> I know it's like these basic questions that we should be able to answer that it's just, Sort of jarred with the Senate now the bill. We're like, ah, hey, you won't, you won't go to the bill. He'll run the student body, right? What about graduation? We're like, oh, no idea. So, you check out the Senate, and then you can post it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then uh, we also had, we had, I had Bill Seaton yesterday, um, and he was like, well, 
they automatically took out like the fee for graduation, but I won't be participating in it. So who do I go and talk to? What no. would have been my response for that? You're going to pay the fee anyway because it's for your diploma, not for your graduation ceremony. Yeah. Oh. If you buy a diploma, yeah. then you pay the fee. So Everyone has to pay the fee. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we provide your cap and gown. Oh, no, no. Um, they think it's for the cap and gown. It's for the diploma. Okay. Well, um, if there is some way that we could get that type of information down, because one thing that we just did yesterday. It's in the letter. Um, okay. Well, I'm saying like the things that are just consistent every year. Um, that it's, it's, but it's the letter. It's letter is just like. Yes. It's, it's the letter. Okay. It's actually the letter. Right. The letter. There was a, we'll add it to it. Right. Read the letter. Read the the letter. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think I need to read the letter. Yeah. Just read anything. Yeah. 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 There's nothing more than is in here. Beautiful. Um, Herschel has something more than is in here, he told me. Herschel's with the adjuncts. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say. He told me that there was. I paid attention. Then Herschel got you. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be glad to. I, I'm just a, a representative of the adjunct committee. I'm not the chair. And usually about a week prior to this meeting, I send Dorothy Collins uh, uh, an email saying, is there any item? Well, this time she emailed me, emailed me back and said that it was extremely difficult for her to chair the meetings and things like that. But I'd like to do it. So I sent an email back saying, oh, Pray about it. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I spent a week thinking about it and visited also with Joe Meditz, who's a colleague of mine who was chair for years. So I've, I've agreed to do it with his help and with my dean's help and information and so forth. So that's the process there. So I'll be doing that. I have not, I've not chaired a committee, and so it'll be important to help me. Uh, know about the agenda items, uh, the process, or at least I haven't done that here. You know, I've, at other places I might have been important, but not here. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Don't send her social media. Well, I, 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 <laughs> well, I was president of the NEA for years, so you can't speak Kansas, so I've done things like that, but not, nothing here. You'll be great. And, but uh, uh, one of the items that I'm concerned with, and someone may help me with, is that you know, the adjunct faculty is so very important because they, they, they teach so many of the hours and more and more. And yet it's difficult to make contact. So when you when you set up a meeting and, and, and try to try to get together with people, that's a difficult thing. So if someone has an idea about when and where that might happen to help involve more people. I'd like to have as many people from all the areas as possible involved. So Appreciate your help and uh, um, you should have your adjunct meeting prior to adjunct orientation on welcome night. Go do that, yeah. And and, and and another thing that we try to right do after, you know, another after. thing we try to do is have uh, have one one a month. Right. Sometimes prior to this one. But that would give you a lot more solvent. Have you tried a conference call? I have not. Yeah. Per do you have business cards? Sure. I do not, not for yeah. this area. Well my my this might be something simple. Give a business card, give them to the divisions, maybe even the uh, administrative assistants, okay. and just say, you know, when new people come in, say, hey, this is our rep. And then here's how to contact yeah. them. Okay. That might help. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's get in touch with uh, Daryl Long. Uh, Daryl Long is the chair of the
least in, in my division. Thank you. Our division, sorry. Anything else, faculty? Is that this way? When was our last meeting? Um, we won't do an end of the year ice cream social this year for faculty and staff. Uh, we combine it with our end of the year picnic. So we'll just do one event instead of two. What else do we talk about? It was pretty much more in response to this meeting. About communication. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Students? Um, that's our game plan here. Um, just a small update for those who did not know. The man sitting to my left is my vice president. Um, so he was elected at the towards the middle of March. He was anointed. He was anointed. He was anointed <laughs> for. I like it. I like it. No, no. I was anointed. He was anointed. Um, so quick updates. Uh, our elections for our new upcoming officers are going to be April twenty first and April twenty second is when we'll have voting. Uh, I do plan on running for next year. So next year you're going to be putting your um, <coughs> reports in email form so they come out for the yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That will be part of my campaign. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> for it. Could you pause? You can Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about campaign uh, purpose. It's too bad because Tammy doesn't yeah. have to I have to add that to my, my campaign promises that I don't fulfill so I can get in the process of becoming like a senator. <laughs> so I got I to get that practice of... Now, you know, I'm one of them has honest. been indicted now. Yeah, she's that way, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, well, um, he kind of did it himself. <laughs> like, you want to get all those things out of your system now. Yes. Spend any money this time. Corruption starts here. Yes. Well, well, the train patronage bad plan. <laughs> Wait until you're getting the big bucks to do it. Oh, Lord. Make it worthwhile. You're going to have to go down for it. Make it worth it. <laughs> April 30th, um, we will have an elections banquet, which is something that is new. Um, and the reasoning behind this is so that with, from what we've been told, um, the majority of our board will be new next year. And um, it was kind of weird as coming towards the end of the year that we kept meeting all the movers and shakers of the school. And we felt that it would be important to have all those people come to the banquet where the majority of the people Instances are there so that at the start of the next year, we already know who the who all, yes, we're familiar with the board of trustees, we're familiar with the president, we're familiar with all of the deans and the directors. So, the elections are next Tuesday. Oh, uh, yes, they yes, they are. Yes, they are. That's right. So that way we we're familiar with each other. Um, so that so April thirtieth is going to be in the deli. There'll be cookies and, and lunch. Uh, we'll be like so that's that. Um, we had our Easter on March 28th. Um, since we are leaving and since Andrika will be out of town, uh, we felt as though since we wanted to do Easter and not cancel it, we moved it up a week. Um, it was a wild success. Oh my god, yes, it really was. Um, <laughs> it was a beautiful disaster. <laughs> um, it was amazing to, to have all the kids come out as always. And, Just everything was good about it. Um, we had our, our tournaments um, for our volleyball and our basketball. Basketball was a, a huge turnout. Uh, we had 16, 17 come out um, and participate, and we're actually going to do another basketball tournament at the end of April, um, since it was such a big. It's supposed to be over. It is supposed <laughs> to be over. Um, but with us improving things and wanting to make it better, um, and then just the overall sheer fun of being able to do it, we decided to do another tournament. Um, so that's gonna happen, and then um, our end of the school year bash is coming up. Um, I think it's May the 5th, I think it's the day, no? It may, be. it may not be, but it, it is in May. It is happening. It is happening, yes. it is towards the end of the year. Uh, so we'll be looking out for our flyers, and then uh, we did make a few changes to our constitution uh, in terms of clarifying some of the responsibilities of the individuals on our board. They um, showed they had actually, actually all the changes. changes. Like, you should not give them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you guys all agree on them. So we went over them and reviewed them um, just so that we had a lot of things that were very vague in terms of non-spoken responsibilities. And um, 
we as a board have gotten closer over the years, so we know what those are, but the new people won't. So, so I think we made a CEO of the students and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, I guess, I'll, and I'll make my, my portion on this brief, sorry. Uh, as far as we showed the, uh, what was the exact term of the meeting? From the Board of Trustees. Yeah, the Board of Trustees meeting. We actually played a little bit of a clip from that uh, as far as one of the board members asked, what can we do to help minority students? We played that, the students said, I mean, there was this huge like response where people were like, I'm going to write it, this is the things that you can do, which is what we wanted. This is like, this is good. There are people standing up in the student senate saying, uh, this is what we want as students. There are people like interested in like how these people get elected. People are starting to ask questions. That's 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 what our goal was. So people are becoming involved and interested in the school. We're very excited about that. So are we. Good. We're glad we're doing our job at least somewhat correctly. Did um, you capture those comments? Yes. 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 Um, as of right now, we are in the process of like getting those people to really email us back with more concrete versions of their ideas that we presented, so that way we can streamline it and then present it back to the Board of Trustees, if not by the end of this year, the beginning of the, the next year. Beautiful. Um, we, I think, I'm not sure if we covered this, we are, uh, we're leaving, um, so I, I'm not sure that it interferes, it, that interferes with anything as far as these meetings go, but, so the forensics and debate team, we just won't be here for the next two weeks. The next um, meeting, because I think we, we are extending um, our meetings up to the, it is, our meetings are to the general public in terms of the school and the faculty and staff, um, so if you guys do attend, they will, our, we, we our will not be there, but yeah. we. But plan. someone will be leading meetings. Yes, we do have that. That's our, that's put in place. It's perfect. And uh, see, I was going to talk about the Title IX product. I already did that. And what was this? Uh, no, that's that's that was the access, um, the expansion of the Title IX. But I was going to borrow my glasses. So that was. Well, I think you should. One further thought on your Title IX. Be honest, guys. It should look just like a classroom door. 
I mean, yeah. honestly, and that's what it's going to look like. You go from yes. you go from having windows to not them there. It tends to you know you've got now sheetrock wall, but there's door in the middle of it now. You go up and unlocks it opens. Uh, I don't know if they're planning that if they're planning to have a continued entrance through the business office. I don't think so. I think it's going to be coming through that door. But the actual bill of it is to have that door, to have you come in, and you're not accessing all of the back offices of the business yeah, and, office. And then You're I accessing an area, that, and then you go back from there. And so you have to be checked in. You give them a chance to get it <laughs> finished built, because it's not. So it's like the room's hard more like the enrollment office. It is a better facility yeah. to be able in to. In terms of, you know, okay, if you come in, you get right. checked in first, right. and then you're allowed into the. No, yeah. If you have these to be back there, which probably not. No. What? Well, you know, like the, you know, like in the enrollment office, after you check in, they have a little door that they buzz and then yeah. it opens. Yeah, but I think, they, isn't there like a little glass thing right there? Yeah. Yes. There's, there's a little window. There's like a little window. It's like a little pass through thing. Correct. That's what it is. It protects all of us because it secures our documents. Will be our records. Our there's HIPAA protected information. There's um, records for all the employees. It's a secure facility for that. But from the outside, it looks like a wall. What's on the inside is going to be how they design it. It's their it, office space. Right. It's it's right. I was wandering open. back to find Susan Lindahl the other day. Yeah. And there's a trick. <laughs> I hope they sort of, you know, give them a little more. They're designing it. So, right. Okay, anything else for the good of the cause? Is there a they forced you with you. All right. They forced you with you. Beautiful. Hey, Charlie, is coming up? Yeah. 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 Yeah.